ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the 2023 Beauty and Vision Awards finalists. Welcome, Senior Director for Brand Education, Carol Prota. Hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Oh my God, I am so happy to have you here. Oh my God, this is a long time coming, isn't it? For us to all be together again. I am so happy I could just cry right now. So welcome everybody to the heart of hair. Tonight we have, exactly, let's do that again. All right. Amazing. Um, so we have a lot to share with you tonight. We have amazing presentation. We have, we have an awesome lineup of artists for you tonight. So what we want to do this time is really celebrate our community, celebrate what we do every day in the salon, and celebrate you and your clients. So the way we're approaching this evening is a little bit different than what we've done in the past. What we want to celebrate tonight is what we do every day. So you're going to see a segment on brunettes and reds. Do you do brunettes and reds in your salon? Yeah. Absolutely. And the two artists that are going to showcase their artistry for this are Daniel Mora and Sonia Dove. Then we'll go into what makes the most money in salon, which is blondes, right? And we have the best of the best to show you what blonding really is about with Zach Misquit and Derek Clark. Then we're going to creative color. We don't do those maybe as much, but we need that inspiration to stay always at the top of the trends. And we have two amazing artists again, Brianna Cisneros and all the way from the UK, James Earnshaw. And we have another celebration today. Sebastian is celebrating 50 years of artistry and inspiration. And to share with you all of the different artistry that Sebastian can bring in cutting and styling, we have two of our international artists, Anthony Cole and Morel Koken. So instead of me telling you what the heart of hair is, why don't we have our own people, you, telling us? Video, please. Hello, 
We share our heart with our guests, our clients, fellow hairdressers all the time. Being creative really does come from your heart. It means, you know, giving your gifts with your hands, but also aligning yourself with your guest hearts. It's definitely what a hairdresser usually got into this industry for and what keeps driving us. The ability to share your heart with others with each and every interaction. Truly you do your craft from the heart. It's showing the love that is all within our community. Creativity, it's like a soul tie, passion. Sharing of a love of hairdressing with everybody and all coming together, share the love and our passion for Wella. something you can do part-time. It has to be innate and it has to come from the heart. I feel that I'm changing their lives by bringing them into my family and teaching them everything I know. We work on the inside but the package is on the outside and they get to leave with that as well. We are such an important part of people's lives. What we do is extremely important. Oh my God, I went to a show, connecting with other stylists. You can see what the top artists create. Incredibly inspirational to come back together again, to have events. And the energy is always big. It's, just, it's one of my favorite things about the hair industry in general is the show. Just the camaraderie and the excitement in a group. The music and the feel and the vibes that you get. I think any over Sebastian Weller's show is so badass. I love being a part of the Weller family. I'm so extremely appreciative to this brand, for sure, from the bottom of my heart. When I think of Weller, I think of home. It's exciting to be on the forefront with Weller uh, as they lead the way, for sure. I like the fact that Weller didn't try to push me into being something that I'm not. I would not be me without Weller. A step above everybody else, in my opinion, as far as the technology and the technique. And when I discovered Weller, I discovered I could belong just as who I was. Everything that they put out we can trust mostly what willa means to me is love we just adore the commitment that the professionals at willa have willa has so much ed education for everybody they align with our vision of the industry it is like having a worldwide cheerleading team being part of the willa family means to me i get to work best of the best. We have the product range from color care and styling to create anything we want. Be the best and that's I think what being part of the Wella family is all about. Welcome to the heart of hair. Welcome to the heart of hair.
welcome to the stage global creative artist Sonia Dove and Wella ambassador Daniel Mora. today. Wow, this is fabulous. What an amazing, amazing audience. So, we love, love you too. You Just saying. So, this is the first time we're on stage together and I'm going to be a little bit of a personality and say, <laughs> I have been watching this gentleman for years and years and years. I reside in Mexico and I realize this wonderful gentleman is Mexicano. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, so it's a perfect, perfect fit. So we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. You know me, I don't take things too seriously. And Daniel, we've got our beautiful collection. So we're presenting uh, reds and brunettes. Brunettes. For usual. Yes. So let's talk about our first uh, couple of models. I'd like to bring up, let's take um, ourselves to the screens and I'd like to share with you Yelin's before picture. Now, Yelin here, you can see she's got a lot of hair. There's the before picture. Am I mad? All her own hair. No extensions, no nothing. This is all Yelin's hair, lifting it up and everything. And it's dark. Her hair's naturally very, very dark. It's a level three. You can see there, she's giving a swish. And I went in, I like to do things simply, really simple. I went in with blonde or plex, 10 volume, with some pieces in the front, lightened those pieces up, and went in with my wonderful, delicious, Color Touch. The reason Color Touch for me is the most pigmented of the colors of our Demi Permanent line because I wanted it red and I used 66 stroke 45. And for any of our non Weller users, that is an intense red, level six, red, red violet. So it's a Demi Permanent all over, simple. And um, here she is. It's um, she's gorgeous, she's got beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hair. And of course, I had to just zhuzh it up. I just fancied bringing attention to that beautiful face she has by sticking a silver strip in the middle of her parting. That. Good job. <laughs> All right, guys, before I get started, how does it feel to be the number one brand, color brand yeah. in the world? Yeah. Right? All right, can we get the before for my beautiful model? If you guys can actually look at the before, it was a color correction. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So my approach to curly hair in general, it's it has to be very natural, right? Like I can't go in and do the placement that I do on someone that has, um, let's say, straight hair. It's gonna look too constructed. It's not gonna flow as natural as this. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, if you don't, it's Daniel and Beauty. So be sure you follow me on there. <laughs> so my goal here was to tame down some of the red that you guys can see there was pretty intense, right? And so I ended up doing her base zone one. I did it with six stroke, three seven, Illumina, 20 volume. And then uh, zone two, I did the same formula, six stroke 37 and 30 volume, just to kind of up the level a little bit more. Then we went back in did highlights, and then I used Color Touch, five stroke, nine seven with 1.9 to the rest of the hair that was um, outside the foils. And then lastly, we ended up by toning her hair using Color Touch 773. I let it sit for 20 minutes. I really wanted to neutralize, but also keep the highlights really rich. So if you guys notice, every time she moves her hair, can you like, move your hair a little bit? You kind of can, I call this luster, right? Like I don't necessarily want to see any lines. It's more so about the shine that it creates um, all over the head without having to be super, you know, placey Beautiful. with the placement. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. So let's hear it for our two first models. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So we're going to now step into demonstration mode. 
and um, we have our two models here, and this is uh, Galena. And what I asked Daniel is, I asked him if I could start first because Galena has these beautiful, beautiful blue eyes, and I felt what was really missing for her was a nice fringe. We always, fringe is like a frame, a frame to those beautiful eyes. So for me, putting in a fringe to her hair, it's um, really going to make a huge difference. So I'm going to get started on cutting. Well, my Mr. Daniel there takes out his bow. I'm gonna take it off if I can. Oh yes, can, I'm gonna be able to. You can't, you cut it out. <laughs> All right guys, so my, again, brunettes, if we can actually get the before, this is one of the things that I see a lot on social media, people posting they don't do great coverage, right? And my take on this is that great coverage doesn't have to be boring. You can also, you can also spice it up, and I do great coverage on clients that are 21 to 60 something, and um, it doesn't have to be boring. So with her, we started with KP six stroke zero and 20 volume at the root, and then we moved on to doing highlights. She actually had black, almost black color in her hair. So I'm actually using 20 volume to lift that out to then tone it down with Shinefinity 775. 775 is gonna be a shade that it's gonna be warm and it has like an iridescent, almost like mauve um, undertone. And I wanted to pair it up with a haircut that was very 90s. I feel like the new generation is very much about bringing the old school back, right? The, Gen Zers, is that what they're called? So I wanted to do that with this haircut. Just keep it simple, I'm pretty known for my beach waves, so I wanted to step out of my comfort zone. Something that I've been enjoying at Wella, I'm cutting hair now. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday I was styling and I'm like, oh my God, I haven't styled in seven years. How am I gonna pull this off? And honestly, today when I walked in, I was just like, you know what, let's do this. And I got my reference photos. And I was like, may God be with me. And here we are. <laughs> she looks gorgeous, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Gorgeous. So, I'd like to bring uh, attention to Galena. So let's look at Galena's before picture, which is up on the screen. You've got a lovely little reel there to show you the color application. At the moment, I'm just defining the fringe area for her because for me is the fringe, we as hairdressers, we're almost like a plastic surgeons a little bit, if you don't mind me saying. And what we do with the hair can make such a difference to the face shape. And when I looked at Galena, she's got this beautiful bone structure and gorgeous blue eyes. And I wanted to frame those blue eyes. So my interpretation of a fringe is not that little fringe in the middle, it's the fringe that goes all the way out to the edges to frame her eyes. So I've just cut that, and now I'm going to like just take you through the color formulation. You can see her before picture. She's about a level eight, eight and seven in areas. A little bit of a color correction but I like to do hair in one go. What I did was, I'm just going to turn her around maybe for the wonderful cameraman. Um, I went in with a type of color blocking, but rather than doing vertical color blocking, as in my hair, vertical pieces, panels, all the way down, I wanted to be doing something a little bit different. I made it more horizontal. So the colors that you see here on the screen, we started off with a red, going into an orangey red, going into an orange, going into a yellow, and then back going into the colors that are on the top. So we're going dark to lighter to lighter, the lightest, and then back down to dark. My inspiration, looking out into this wonderful audience, is uh, someone a few of you might not know, and it is Debbie Harry. I loved Debbie Harry. Does anyone remember Debbie Harry, or am I that old? And she had the black ends on a bob. I love that tipping, that edging of um, color. So that's what I wanted to do uh, with Galena. And 
Oh, Looks you finished beautiful. already, my I, I fa- Do you remember I'm fast? Yeah, oh, he's wow. fast. Wow. <laughs> I do. I'm learning that now because I looked over and you're done. So, um, I wanted uh, to just do a red, creative red technique on her hair and really just take it to a different level. You can see in the reel. Uh, I will, if I may mention, and I don't want to hog the stage, but uh, this year, um, 2023, is my 40th year with Weller. Yes. And to add on to Daniel's, we are the number one hair color company. And I have not moved from this brand because it is truly hashtag well a family for me and it's it's <laughs> always for all of this room's got energy like we need community we need people we need to just elevate the industry and let the industry know this is the best career to be in for everything <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry so let's see our lovely models <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to present our last beautiful model from our collection, the beautiful Alexis. We're all obsessed with her voluminous hair, right? Yes. Yes. So with Alexis, what we did, um, first of all, we gave, we gave her a cut. We gave her a trim. You, there's Alexis's before picture. She didn't really have any layers on the top. It was more one length, but she had the layers on the perimeter. So we gave her a trim. Now, the trim we gave her, you can see, it's given her a lot of lift, a lot of volume. Is it the butterfly? Is it the octopus? <laughs> is it the, is it, uh, what, butterfly, octopus, wolf? <laughs> I don't know. But I call it a, a, the previous known name, a long layered haircut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, sorry, but you know, I love the names, but I'm on my seventh time of a long layered haircut and all the names. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so. All right, guys, so this is kind of like a mixture of her toning and my placement style. I pretty much want to create dimension, which is what I am known for. Um, and here it is. I want her to sort of have two different styles per se, right? When she yes. flips it to one side, it's gonna be a little bit more of a brunette. And then when she flips it to the other side in the center, she has a bunch of highlights through the center. Beautiful. Turn it to the back. Beautiful. Yes. So that's like convertible color. If Alexis wants to go out, she wants to be that sultry, deep, rich, dark chocolate brunette you know i'm almost oh gosh that sounds like a dark chocolate i could do with a piece <laughs> of chocolate but there we are um and you're right it's just she's got that way of wearing it but then the other way of wearing it she's got more of the copper so we wanted to have one model where we combined the brunettes with the um, coppers so the color here is cowgirl copper yeah, a little bit like those trousers. I know. I, I have to honestly say. just I wore it because of that. I, I love cowboy copper. I know. I love it. So what we've done is we just styled her hair using the GHD iron and we set it. Alexis, if I may ask if you could put your head forward. She has so much hair, Daniel. She's got a lot of hair. So just running the fingers through it, the placement was very simple. Because of her hair texture, uh, Danielle and I went in with Shinefinity. We used equal parts of nine stroke seven, zero nine stroke seven three from Shinefinity, our new addition to our demi-permanent family. Um, very different to Color Touch. And she needed that shine. She's got very strong hair. Pop your head back, my lovely. That's it, you flip it back. There, 
Hold it. Here we are. Thank you. I'm his. I'm Daniel's I'm his assistant. I'm assist her assistant today. Oh no, vice versa, honey. <laughs> vice versa. <laughs> All right, guys. So, zero nine seven three is actually one of my favorite shades to sort of um, naturalize any copper, right? Especially who's used Shinefinity before, right? Yeah. One thing we know about Shinefinity is that it is strong and it works, correct? So one of the ways I like to, again, refine it is adding the 7.3s to it. If you guys haven't, add it on there, which is what we did here. And it is the most beautiful cowgirl, copper. It's gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So any- You want more hairspray? A little bit, a little bit. She's, she's very spray. much about the hairspray. So I feel like I'm very hairspray inside. I'm like, don't use hairspray. And she's like, no more. 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 And I'm like, don't use more. And she's like, more. Yes. But then to make it not look so much, we go in and we use our wonderful dark oil shine spray. <laughs> <laughs> so I think All right. Alexis Let's needs to watch. just show off her beautiful hair. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sebastian International Artist Morel Koken and Anthony Cole. Good evening, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you all tonight to really give you a really cool breakdown of Sebastian using techniques from commercial looks, starting with that, going into texture. And after going from texture, and we're gonna go into a little bit more of an avant-garde feel. So I'm gonna start with Joanne was, was my model. She came in with a level two color. I brought it down to a level six. We did some highlights in there, so put some caramel pieces inside of there. I already started to pre-cut her hair, as you see. So I really went into the front a little bit on the sides, but I wanted to leave it most for you, but I don't have that much time, so I want to give you as much as I can in all that time. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Finally, right? Oh, I live for these events, you know, don't you? Oh, the more the better, and it's so nice to see everyone here and all these familiar faces, and this, you know, I do this for all of you. You know, I enter with all of you, and I think it's like such an amazing and special time to be here. And, you know, to see all my best friends. And so, yeah, it's very special to me. So um, besides that, I'm going to do some badass haircuts. And, um, and I do something a bit more like, you know, salon friendly. They said, do something salon friendly. I'm like, I think I can do that. I think <laughs> I can do that. So, um, you know, the back cutting technique is one of my favorite techniques. Um, I do in the salon. The people who work with me, they know that's really all I do. And, um, and if you don't know how to do it, I highly suggest go check out the academy and get your training in. Wouldn't you say so? Right? 
Okay, so with Joanne, what I did is I found the high point of her head, and everything that I'm doing is from the high point of the head. So visually, I'm, I'm cutting, like, just visually through, like, just not really taking much sections, but really going with the shape of her head. That's exactly what I want to do. So I'm coming into this front area, and in this fringe area, I'm coming in and I'm doing back cutting. Short hair supports long hair, right? So every time I come up like this, I'm getting all these short hairs, and as I elevate and bring up, I'm maintaining length so that when I bring it back down and I bring it in, I have all of this short hair underneath there that's gonna support this hair to go back like this so I can get that really cool long curtain fringe. As I do that, now I'm gonna move this fringe to the side and then in this line here, I hate leaving hair really one length there, but I don't want to overextend this hair to the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it just like this. I'm gonna take my shear right out just like this and I'm gonna cut right onto the line so that I can break that line up and give her a lot of texture. As you see, the texture starts to really move in there. And all I did is give her a really cool bouncy blowout using mousse forte. So I love cutting dry hair because I feel like if, if I cut wet hair, I feel like I'm blindfolded. I'm not sure if you guys are, but wet cutting, I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing besides a straight line, right? So I do fake it a lot to, because I, you know, I faked it a lot to make it these days and you know, in this industry. It's like I pretend like I'm really good and it, it actually benefited me. So, um, right, it's true though. Yeah, you know, I, no, no, Jamie, you did too. So, um, <laughs> Anyhow, um, I love dry cutting. I highly suggest it, and um, you see the shapes right away. And sometimes it's a good thing, and sometimes it's not, but let's <laughs> hope today it's good. Me too, I love to cut dry hair because I it wanna see where it wants to live. So as I'm cutting, it's kind of opening up, and I'm really seeing where the hair wants to live, and that's super important to me because if I'm, if I'm not seeing where the hair lives and I'm cutting wet, Sometimes if I want a textured look, I don't really know where it's gonna fall, but if it's dry, I know exactly where it wants to live and I go right in with my back cutting and I get all that texture inside of there. So you could start to see all of this texture opening up already, right? And if you see, I am not over directing this way because I don't want any lines coming in. I want everything pretty much straight. So I'm coming in and I'm just staying right behind that hairline just like this. And this is really basically a little commercial for you to really get you interested in coming down to one of our classes. We do in salon classes as well as the studio. It's amazing to learn these techniques. Because for me, when I brought this into my career, it was just like life changing for me. When I saw that first Sebastian show, I went down to LA, I really, really wanted to learn how to do this. And for me, it brought, it, in the salon, it brought me like from A to Z. <laughs> uh, A to Z? A to Z, yeah. <laughs> Starting out as A and then I go to Z once I met Sebastian. Oh, the Z is you're done. Okay, cool. Yeah. I wasn't sure, yeah. So, um, oh my God, I just love your stories, Anthony. You're like, it's, you know, like, you know, Jasonia was talking about like how long she's been with Sebastian, with Wella. And I just feel like I should probably not say how long I've been with Sebastian because it kind of tells you my age. But, um, you know, I was this young hairdresser trying to find my spot in the industry. And I landed with Sebastian because it's a company I've dreamed to be with. It's not something that's been given to me. That's something I had to fight for. And I feel like today's age, as a young hairdresser, I highly suggest you should probably fight where you want to be, okay? If you really want to be somewhere, like, like focus on it and fight for it. Because you know what, it's not gonna be given to you, right? I had to fight for it. And I'm just so grateful to be with a company who, you know, who took me in because I was young and I had big dreams. So um, anyhow, I just like, just a little background. I thought you liked it, right? So do we see that movement that it has, right? So I just kept it, it's still really beautiful, it's still really long, it's got a lot of bounce to it, and yet there's so much movement. I can kind of move it any way I want, I could bring her over to the side if I wanted, and I can still get all of that support just from moving it. So I took a little bit of um, uh, 
my, one of my, actually one of my favorites, microwave fiber. And when I just took a little bit in my hands, because people always get a little nervous with microwave fiber. They're like, isn't it too strong? Can I put that in long hair? Can I do that? Yeah, you can. You just use that little bit, put it into your hands, really emulsify it in, break down the fiber, and it's almost like hairspray in your hands. So I can really style with that now, and really move it up. I can get as much body and fullness as I want as I start bringing it in. And you can actually start to see that, that back cutting work. I can really get anything that I want to do with it. I can move it around, I can make it big, or I can make it, I can make it small with it. I can bring it down, make my waves come out with it. And it was, you know, it was designed by the spider web. So it's like, it's super flexible. So all day long, you can move it around and get the flexibility that you want. So I use no breaker. I know no breaker is made for color and all that, but you know, I'm a hair cutter and I love the slip of no breaker. And um, if you haven't used no breaker with cutting, I would highly suggest it because it's a fantastic lotion to cut with. How is it? Do you love it? Is it something you want? Is it salon friendly? Right? Thank you guys. Welcome to the stage, Wella Ambassadors, Zach Mesquit and Derek Clark.
Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> My name is Zach Mesquit. I'm Derek Clark. And this is our Ultimate Blondes collection. So we're really excited to show you guys what we've been up to this past weekend. And to start things off, this is our collab model that we did together. So this is Antonio. And I'll talk a little bit about the color and then Derek will jump in and talk a little bit about the cut and style. So as you can see in his before, he was very dark. So we wanted to create something that was kind of in between the other looks that we created individually which was some warmer tones and then some cooler tones. So he's kind of right there in the middle with a nice neutral sandy blonde. So we lifted him up with my one true love blonder plex lightener with 20 volume, right, right? Um, because he has naturally curly hair, you really want to take good care of those curls while you're doing the lifting process. So never go above 20 volume. Just let it go low and slow, which will be the theme of our presentation tonight is low and slow. <laughs> Lifted him up to about a level nine, and then we toned him back down with Illumina 8 stroke 37, which is a nice balance of warm tones to create this very complimentary kind of cinnamon blonde that you see here. I love it, Zach. So what I did to style Antonio was I used my oil reflections, the light oil. I don't want to weigh his hair down. His hair is natural, so it is curly. Um, so I emulsified the um, alumina oil, sorry. The oil reflections in my hand, emulsified it, ran it through the hair. Then I took my flat iron and I just kind of smoothed the hair out. But I wanted to give him like a Johnny Bravo GQ, you know, so he out in these streets, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I um, just kind of smoothed it out and kind of spiked it up and then just, just um, ran my hand, I kind of finger styled it. So give him a spin, Antonio. Of course, I sealed him with my ultimate repair. That's the bomb.com. Yes. <laughs> All right. You guys like? Yeah, what do you think? All right, so you can hang out over there. And we have got some other models to talk to you guys about now. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about our styling, and then we're going to jump into the color. So what I've got going on over here is my gorgeous model, Serenity. She goes by Renity. And while I start working on her, Derek, do you want to tell us what you're going to be doing over there with your model? Yes, I have Sarita here. Give it up for Sarita. <laughs> Sarita has beautiful, thick, full, curly hair. She's like a level three. and. Um, you can't see it now, um, but she has like these golden um, eyes. I can't wait to tell you about her formula. But what I did was I did a Bantu knot, twist out on her hair, um, which gives a lot of volume. Um, then I did, it gives a lot of volume. It also um, defines the curl. It, um, let's see what else do I love about the Bantu knot. Twist out, defines the curl. <sighs> Low maintenance, protective style. You get that? I had to think. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but you know, I love you guys, so. <laughs> so that's all I did. I kind of, um, I let her set overnight. It was kind of moist and I let it set overnight. I just twisted it like that all the way around. I didn't have to use any bobby pins either. It stayed secure. So that's a good thing. I, did you sleep good with these in your hair? Okay. That, I used to do them to my hair and they hurt, but she said she liked them, so. So that's all I did. So you can kind of see these three here. So she, I did like all over the head. So boom, Zach, what'd you do? Well, let me tell you. So Serenity here, she has all natural hair as well. So as you'll seen her before, very, very curly. And like we mentioned earlier, when you're dealing with lightening curly hair to extreme levels, you really want to take it very safe. Even though I did end up putting some extensions in her hair for the show, Obviously, I wanted to make sure in everyday life we still respected her curls and made sure that they held their curl and didn't get destroyed in the process. So I lifted her very slowly and gently using Blonder Plex Lightener, and I just used 10 Volume Developer. And I started by applying that to her mids and ends first. And what I like to do is let things lift until I'm about a level away from my desired level. 
So I wanted to create for her like a silvery tone blonde that wasn't gray. So in order to achieve a tone like that, you want a nice balance of warm and cool. If you go just straight in with cool silver tones, it's really easy to overdo it. And then you just kind of end up with like gray hair, which sometimes is a look, but for her, I really wanted that kind of neutral, um, soft silver. So I mixed up Illumina, which is one of my favorite things to tone with ever. I used the shades 10 stroke 81 and 10 stroke 36. So it's a nice balance of cool tones and a little bit of gold. Um, I, I mixed that up, applied it all over her natural hair as well as the extensions and just installed those. And as you can see from the clips, her curls were still perfectly intact at the end of the process because I made sure to take the process slowly. Um, and then of course, one thing I cannot forget to mention is Ultimate Repair was used every step of the way. <laughs> Ultimate Repair fans, I see, it's, it's incredible. Like you, years ago before technology like this came out, you wouldn't be able to do things like this. Yeah, I agree. So it really <laughs> changes the game. Especially for textured hair, you know? Absolutely. So what I did on my client, Sarita, like I said, you might, you might not be able to see her eyes, but she has like beautiful hazel golden eyes. Hopefully you guys can kind of see them. So I wanted to play off of that and compliment her skin complexion and her eye complexion. So I used um, Colestine Perfect 10 stroke 38 to lift her base to like a nice golden tone. And then I went in with my Blonder Plex 20 volume. The key to curly hair and to lift safely is like we said earlier, low and slow. Let the product work and let it do what it's gonna do. Um, so I went in, I used my 20 volume with uh, Blonde Reflex and I did a heavy highlight all over the hair, right? I wanted to give her hair a heavy dimension. Um, then I let that process for about 45, 50 minutes and just let it kind of ride all the way through and I kept checking the foils. Um, she lived to, to about a level eight. Then I went in and I toned her with Color Touch uh, eight stroke zero and nine strokes, nine stroke, Nine stroke nine, seven stroke nine seven, I'm sorry. Um, and it gave it like a beautiful C Dre like golden, like honey blind tone. You like that? And I'm just kind of fluffing her hair out. Be careful not to fluff too much because you will make her hair frizzy. Um, you don't want frizzy, frizzy natural hair. They hate that. You want it nice and smooth. But a little bit of volume, you know, more volume. But the more you, 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 you fluff through it, you'll make it frizzy. So just keep that in mind. But remember, low and slow with the natural hair, okay? Yeah, absolutely beautiful. So when I'm just finishing up her styling over here, I'm pretty minimal when it comes to styling. The type of work I do is a lot of extreme blonding. It's hair that you don't really wanna overwork and you wanna take very good care of. So I had her come out nice and sleek and straight and now I'm just doing some loose waves with my Platinum Plus Flatiron by GHD, which is my favorite tool to create curls. Um, and this is just something that I would do for my clients in the salon. I usually say, you want it curly, you want it straight. And this is, this is just a look that they can wear for like a week or more. And products as well, I don't like to load the hair with too many products with Platinum Blondes just because I feel like with, with this color hair, less is more. You don't want to lose the shine and weigh it down with, with too much. So I prepped her hair as always with Thermal Image Spray, which is my favorite heat protector. It's very light, it's never sticky. So loaded her hair up with that, blue dry it in, and then to finish it off, before I start curling, Glam Mist all over everything, which is a very lightweight shine spray. And then just popping some very loose waves in there, leaving the ends straight. I find if you curl all the way down to the ends, you get a tighter curl, whereas if you leave the last few inches straight, it just kind of leaves things a little more open and loose. So very simple, very minimal, just shiny, beautiful platinum hair. Just let me just keep. Her hair is gorgeous, Zach. Thank you. You guys liking the volume? You see how I went in and shook her hair? That loosens up the um, interior because sometimes it can kind of be clumped together. So to loosen that up, that's a little trick I do. I do it with my hair too. My hair is actually really, really big and wild, but my barber couldn't cut me, so I had to wear it twisted. I usually wear it like this though, but I go in and I kind of shake it up like that. And I use my uh, oil reflections, light. I like the light. The other one's good too, but I like the light because 
I can manipulate the hair a little bit more. Does that make sense? Um, and then I would go through and I take my glam mist just to give it a nice sheen and to seal it. With my glam mist, eye me, hit it with that, bam. Mm -hmm. Bam. I love it. All right. What you got, Zach? So I am all done here with Brandy. So she's nice and wavy now. I got the mermaid waves going on. So now I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about my pre-done over here. So this is Sierra. And as you can see, I really like drastic transformations. So her before here, she was very much a brunette. And one thing that's really interesting, talking again about ultimate repairs, her hair, she can testify to this, was actually in worse shape before we did this process on her. And we did not have to cut her hair, which is incredible. So um, she was about, I'd say, a level four to begin with, all natural hair. And again, the theme is low and slow. So if you want to do a little 360, just so everybody can see everything you're working with. I just wanted to, <laughs> thank you. I wanted to create a very clean, classic, like Marilyn Monroe inspired, like Barbie blonde, you know, not ashy, but not warm either. A really nice, just clean balance. So I lifted her up using just six volume developer. So Wanderplex lightener as always. I kept it right off of her scalp, mids and ends, just like with Serenity Tell, I was about a level away from my desired level, 10. And then once I applied to the scalp and let it all lift evenly, I used Colossum Perfect 10 Stroke 3.8, which is my go-to absolute favorite shade to use when I want this kind of a blonde, where I want to make sure it does not go ashy, but I also want to make sure it doesn't have that raw bleached look with 20 volume. So it gives a little bit more of a brightening effect and that's the result. That's beautiful. Look how healthy her hair still looks. That's the ultimate repair. <laughs> so on my model Elise, I did a color block technique. Um, that's kind of like popular right now, right? I'm glad that came back. You guys noticed that the color block is coming back in? Okay, so I did a color block technique on Elise. I sectioned her from ear to ear. It's like a money piece, but I sectioned her from ear to ear, from ear to ear. And then I went in with my 10 volume and Blondra Plex, and I let that sit for about 45 minutes. And then um, in the back here, turn back here for me. Back here, I went in with Cholesterol Perfect, um, eight stroke, seven four. I wanted to give her like a brown, reddish uh, vibe. Fall was my inspiration, right? I'm inspired by like the seasons. Are you guys inspired by the seasons too? Or am I just like a weirdo? Okay, good. Come back around for me. And then I just kind of went in. Um, oh, I let that sit for about 45 minutes too. Then I um, rinsed her and I toned her front piece, the blonde in here with the Lumina 7 stroke 1 3, just to give it like an ash gold. And we got this color block technique. And then I went in to style her with my uh, GHD. I did like a mm, old school roller set, but with my curling iron all over the hair and just bumped it. And I used my um, I Me. Stay firm hairspray just to lock in the um, curl. And then I just went through with my, um, what you call that? My rake comb and I raked through and just kind of fluffed it up. Gorgeous. That's it. Gorgeous. All right, y'all. Well, that's it for us. We'll let you get one more look at our models and we will see you at the after party. Bye. <laughs>
talk about a little bit of this texture going on. I really wanted to look for a grungy kind of texture, but this is really a color story as well. Because with her, she came in, she was using box color. I put, I put lightener on her hair. The minute the lightener went on, it turned fuchsia. Then it went to pink. And then the miraculous, like literally the miraculous color touch fixed the whole entire thing. So I'm gonna start with some twist cutting and back cutting because when I'm cutting curly hair, especially when I'm looking for more of a grunge kind of feel, I'm twisting and then I'm back cutting into it. So I'm gonna bring up her length right into there from, the, from twisting it. And I'm gonna keep coming in and each section that I take, I'm gonna just take individually and I'm gonna do it by eye. Because I want, in texture, I like highs and lows inside of that. Because if, if, if you do it just in evenly, you cut that hair, it just starts to really get big. And I really want to keep it really soft. So I'm going to come right in here, and I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to give it over to Morel. I did an extra, I just wanted to walk more, you know? <laughs> um, so I wanted to show you a little bit more, like I love short haircuts. And for me, it's all about like the face of the model, right? It's like sometimes I have a haircut of mine, but it's not the right face. I just can't do it. But for her, she's just so beautiful. And, and you know, it's a cool, cool short haircut. So, and I love the razor. I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to use a razor. <laughs> well, hold on, because I say, well, you can't use a razor on dry hair, right? But I can. <laughs> if you do it right, it gets done good. But it's not about the razor. It's probably like the person who has a holding the razor, no? Yeah, so. So as you see, I keep going through and I'm working on my length right now. When I first, backstage, I was like really cutting some pieces around here. So I had a pre-cut because I really don't have that much time. So I really wanted to get some pre-cuts done so I can get in here and really keep it. So for me, this is all about like effortless curly hair. So it's not about like too contrived or anything. I want to be able to move that hair around, start getting it to move and looking kind of grungy, but at the same time having a lot of highs and lows inside of there. So I can kind of keep an editorial feel on it, but yet having that nice grunge kind of next day kind of feel to it as well. Because a lot of times with curly hair, people are afraid to, they, they put like tons of product in the hair. I didn't really use that much. I used some dark oil. I used some microwave fiber to really kind of give me a little bit more of a control. And then I used shine spray. So one of my, two of my favorite products is definitely no breaker. It's dark oil, it's craft clay, it's texture spray. Actually, there's so many of them, right? But um, the dark oil is definitely like a to-go to. My clients bait in it, right? Isn't it? And now Wella comes out also with these good products. I'm like, no, no. It's like she's take with no breaker. You guys just, <sighs> right? All right. Oh yeah, that is looking nice. I'm gonna ask you to bring your head a little bit down. Just open this up a little bit. So three times bleaching textured hair. Look at the condition of it. Right? Well, aplex, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nothing like it. And with the combination of the Sebastian products, I can kind of look at her right now and I can kind of really get a really cool feel. I'm gonna get a little bit of dark oil, like I was talking about. I'm gonna get a little bit of microwave fiber. I'm gonna mix these two together like that. And I'm gonna continue to get my grungy kind of feel. Oh, what a face. So, um, <laughs> I could have done everything on her, right? If you have a good face, you're like, oh my God, I have 10 different haircuts I want to do on you. And then I have to go back to my basics. I'm like, okay, 
you know, let's keep it simple, but powerful, right? Because sometimes the most, most simple haircuts can be the most powerful ones. And um, a bleach and toner, and I'm not a colorist. We all know I'm not a colorist, right? People are working in the salon. I have never claimed I'm a colorist. I'm a hair cutter, but I do color. I'm not sure how good I am, but my clients like it. So, hold on, it's actually really funny because I'm not a good bleach and toner, but it looks good. I'm not saying it doesn't look good. But, wait, and I've never used these blonde or like the blue things, right? The stroke, whatever. Yes. And the stroke like 16. It really, really works, you know? It really it works. Stand. So, thank you, Ella, making my life easy. Welcome, Wella Ambassador Brianna Cisneros and Global Wella Ambassador James Earnshaw. My God. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Brianna, I never thought this moment would come that I am finally on stage with you. I know. <laughs> we had to be apart for all of 30 seconds, split, and I missed yeah. you. I missed every minute of it. But look at these beautiful faces. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here tonight with you guys because tonight's all about inspiration and artistry and expressing yourself. And you can tell we did not hold back. <laughs> totally, totally. And what a dream. I feel so lucky to be part of Wella, newly appointed global ambassador. I love saying it because I feel so proud. Give it up for James, everybody. <laughs> Literally, Wella has made my dreams come true. I'm from a tiny town in England, so... Here I am in Las Vegas, which is the craziest place I have ever been in my <laughs> life. What the hell? It's crazy. Not all of America looks uh, like Las <laughs> Vegas, James. <laughs> so, Brianna, it's been an absolute pleasure. We're the creative segment today. We're using yes. all of the Weller portfolio to show you the magic that you can create using Weller professionals. What do you guys think? Thank you. Our inspiration was obviously there's some color blocking, there's some color melting together, there's lots of pastel tones on the stage today. We wanted to kind of do an array of pastel tones and talk about it in depth because honestly pastel can be pretty crazy. Um, and you have to really consider what you're putting it on, how you're mixing it, how you're lifting, and all of that. But I want to show you my my beautiful models before photo. This is Samantha. And we did, yeah, there she is. We lifted her up and we did kind of a marbling technique with her mint and her blonde. And we kind of did it in different sections. So some is some horizontal color blocking, some is some vertical color blocking, but it's all very soft and similar in tonality because 
of that pastelization, right? So we actually did pre-tone her with Color Touch, and um, we used cape or no cape? No, no for you. Last time, so we came, okay, cape is fine. Last time we were here, we did a big chop, just like we're about to do, and she was like, no cape. <laughs> oh, life on the edge in Vegas. Though. I know, it was so like, I was like, yes, but honestly, we're wearing white, and that's green. I like your, I like your thinking. Anyway, so we did um, color touch 10 stroke zero one, and then I mixed that, we put on, um, sorry, I mixed that with nine, I'm, I'm, I go ahead of myself a lot, but we mixed that with nine, nine, seven, and I left that on for what felt like, it was at least a half an hour, but what felt like an eternity, and then to pre-tone her so that we could get something that looks like this after we used our Color Fresh Create, Never Seen Green, Super Petrol, and a lot of Tomorrow Clear. Such a good transformation. <laughs> we had one of those prep days, one of those shows where nobody had normal amount of regrowth or normal hair. Everybody was huge color transformation. <laughs> Massively. So yeah. So let me talk to you about my model's Cheyenne's color. So again, previously she was blonde. She had old highlights. And the usual thing you would think to do is let's take it lighter. But I actually wanted to work with a really smoky, cool palette and really showcase how cool and darker is sometimes also beautiful. So again, Illumina color was perfect for that. Does anybody else love Illumina? Good, I'm glad you do, so do I. So to me, Illumina 6 stroke 1, 6, 7 stroke 8, 1 was the perfect um, shade to use to darken in a really natural, cool way. So we actually use that with pastel, just to kind of do it as a toning service. And as you see over her hair, it's like a smoky mushroom silver, right? Which is the perfect base for these lilac tones. Now, obviously this is extensions, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, <laughs> so we've colored a few packs of extensions using Color Touch, the formulas are there. And what's really important is we've used two different formulas so you can see those beautiful different violet tones. As you move through the hair, wherever the light catches it, it looks really different. And for me, whenever you're doing creative color, I always like it to still look sexy and I always like it to still feel premium, even if it's playful. So again, by working with different dimensions in the color, that's how you get that result, okay? Now, first of all, you guys are gonna find this strange, but in England, we call this a tong, okay? <laughs> so I know that you guys don't say that, but I'm now gonna tong her hair. And again, um, yeah, you're like, I'm just tonging the model in the back room. It sounds so dodgy, right? <laughs> but I promise we say that in the UK. So again, I'm gonna take my tong or curling iron, depending where you're from, and I'm gonna over-direct this forward, and I'm really gonna make sure I smooth this away from her face, okay? It's really important to open up the face, open up the cheekbones, and create that beautiful contour around the front. If any of you guys do social media content, it's all about the face, it's all about suitability and what works around the front. So by having this beautiful kick and movement through there, it's just making that color come to life through the front, but also look how much that enhances her face shape, right? Super sexy and super beautiful. Thank you. I love it. I love it. We had a lot of fun um, playing with all these styles backstage. It's been so cool, like, working with James because we've had our hands in all of the models. And so we've gotten to know them really well. Brianna's it's... been tonguing them. I've been tonguing them. <laughs> we've all been tonguing <laughs> each other. Wow. Okay. And, but Samantha here goes way back to another... Uh, hair event with Wella, which is why she allows me to take this much off of her hair um, in one go. She trusts me. I did a moon-shaped section up to her parietal ridge and around the front and around the back. And what, am, what I'm doing is I'm over-directing both sides into the center and I'm over-directing it all the way up. And that's why you can actually get in there and with one go, get rid of all that hair creating a really soft, open close, open close, C shaping with my shears, feathered effect. And in one go, she's got this really beautiful, undercut, mullety beauty right here. Gorgeous. Right? And then I can go in, and, and it's really obviously for a hair show, 
I'm gonna do something that's visually like, oh yeah. But you can absolutely, depending on what your sectioning is, you're in being intentional, what your over direction is, and the softness and the edge that you're giving the ends of it, you can absolutely do things kind of smarter, not harder, um, and just comb, 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 then cut, right? Be so intentional about where you're combing that hair, how you're carving the hair, is it pushing towards the face, is it pushing away from the face, and how you're getting all of those little, kind of just using your, your um, visual inspiration to get rid of certain pieces of hair, to bring it to life until it comes to life more and more and more, right? So I'm carving some C shapes around because I can trust that when I over direct it and cut it all here, that it has that shape, right? It's going to be a little bit concave, very concaved, right? With layers coming from the top and those wispy bits through the ends. So everything else can be done visually once you understand and master, right? I think sometimes we skip over some of those like fundamental foundational cutting um, theory, but really what it does is just make your life easier, right? Because the shape is already in there and then you can carve and carve away. What do you guys think? Yes. So on my side now, as you can see, I'm starting to exaggerate that shape and create more volume. So I'm taking the Nioxin dry shampoo, spraying it, and I'm using a dressing brush and really, really exaggerating that shape. And can you see the difference between the left and the right? Just from taking my brush, and again, dry shampoo is a great base to then back brush upon and create more volume. Perfect, and again, round the front, as you can see, once I curled all the hair, I then went through with Sebastian Shine Define and just used my hands, a light spritz, and again, lifted that up. Don't be afraid to get your hands into the hair to really, really bring out that volume and texture. So many times we get scared to just get our hands in there, but as you can see, the more you start to brush it out, the softer and better you create with the texture. So again, lifting up, Spraying my dry shampoo first. And the reason I'm using the Nioxin one is because it's super lightweight, so you can really layer it up. Brushed it out, and just exaggerating that texture. But as you can see, it's that perfect balance of super, super sexy, but still has that edge to it as well. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like, Teasing, brushing, teasing, brushing. Some of it I want to have like a little bit more texture on the end. Some of it I want it nice and light and airy. But I love all the kind of lime greens, teal greens, you know, different shades of blonde, kind of mixing together to just make something that's a little bit grunge, but also really pretty, right? It's like a little bit funky, a little bit grunge, but also like soft and pretty. And I think it's about finding that balance, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it like is. You haven't added 50 different colors through the ends, you know? You've muted back those ends because the cut is so edgy. And I think for me, finding balance is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. something Brianna is fantastic at. Oh, you're too kind. I think, that, I think that's the key with creative work, though. Sometimes it can just look like it has to be intentional, right? You want it to be intentional. You want to see your vision come to life. Um, you want to you know, just feel like this is me, right? Like this is me, this this makes sense, right? Not just creativity for the sake of creativity. Yeah, awesome. Perfect, perfect. So there's our stage models complete. Let's take a little look at our other two looks through here, okay? So Gazelle, Gazelle, Gazelle. One of the hardest color changes of my life. Uh. Let <laughs> I'm gonna remember this one. So, let's get yeah, the keep before it real. up. So again, we previously, yeah, I right, know, right? <laughs> right, right. Please, please, prep was an uphill, like, trudging <laughs> through the mud. We all know that feeling in a color correction when you get halfway through and you're like, kill me now, kill me now. We were there, challenge. we were there yesterday. She would be paying me a lot of money. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> leave color, color, color change. Her hair was red, and why it was so difficult was there was previous highlights in there, so I couldn't just apply the light knot all over. 
I went through with 10 volume on the root to lift up her natural base, 20 volume through those mid lengths and ends using blonde or flex, a hero lightener at Weller, and you can see how her hair still has bounce movement after being lifted from a level four with red to a level nine. Went through with color touch just to deepen in that root. And again, this formula through the ends, guys, nine stroke nine seven plus seven seven five is a lifesaver. If ever you don't get the lift, it's that beautiful beigey blonde that looks really premium. So make sure you take a photo of that formula because it's a game changer and it suits everybody's skin tone. And again, a little pop of yellow because we're in Vegas, got to make it fun. <laughs> and again, that little bit of color blocking. And what I love about it is having the yellow within this beautiful beigey base makes it feel really premium and really yes. beautiful. Whereas if it was it's yellow It's that all fine over, line of like that premium versus like, were you going for that? Yes, exactly. So as you can see, it's playful, it's, it's cool, but it still is premium looking. Absolutely. Great. I love it. It's stunning, 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 stunning. Okay, and so well, who we have over here is this beautiful Bella. And she was a blondie before we got our hands on her. Um, and she actually took me no time. I oh, did you know. Had an easy one. I had one easy one, and <laughs> but I mean, we were in this together, okay? Uh, so I used Illumina 869 and 959 on her regrowth with just pastel developer, you guys. So go ahead and look down. That's the perfect fake, like base break. And when you break the base, it doesn't always have to be bright orange. We're using Illumina, so it's a violet based color line, right? So you can go in and you can get all that lift and have it cooled off a little bit at the same time to give you that perfect peach, right? To, to blend her natural regrowth into what we glossed her with, which I think is kind of the true hero of this color. It's Shinefinity. Yes. Shine Vinity. Okay, 0905, which has like a little kiss. It has 0905, which is like a little kiss of pink. And then with the 834, I cut, I diluted that. That's the 0905 diluted the 834. And so I did about, I would say, a tube, which is like 55 grams, to about maybe 15 grams of the 834, and that's how strong it is to get that perfect beach. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, so our final model's been waiting patiently for us. And as you can see, we have this beautiful kind of 80s, 70s curly shaggy vibe, which I'm absolutely loving. Again, the reference for the shape was Brianna's phone screensaver, which is Whitney Houston. <laughs> and I saw it the other day and I was like, what a perfect silhouette for Ryan. So again, working with the GHD. It was Whitney one, Houston, by the way. It was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say that? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I thought you skipped that part. That's important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so again, that Whitney Houston texture. So it's about width. So using the GHD thin wand was perfect to create that flatter silhouette and that beautiful movement throughout the ends. Well, how are we feeling about this, guys? Oh, this was another, the co color for like, it took ages to get, if we could bring up Ryan's before photo, guys. It was not, not easy. I know, I know. I feel know. like you guys feel the pain from watching. <laughs> I'm like, no, just kidding. Honestly though, um, it was not easy to lift out. Plus she was previously platinum blonde underneath that color. So we wanna say a huge thank you to Wella <laughs> and your amazing product that provides lift yes. and all of the, the tonalities that we needed. Um, we lifted her with Blondor, Plex, and 20 volume. I balayaged her so it was soft at the root and then really saturated through the ends, let it sit for eternity. And then with um, Cholesterol Perfect, we actually shadowed her down a little bit at her root level to get this kind of like really pretty pinky, but like with depth mauve color. And then what you see here through the ends in these lighter bits is the Tomorrow Clear with the high magenta is gonna be the pink. Okay, just a bit of high magenta. And then in here you can see some of these violet -y tones right here in her bangs. That's where we went ahead and added um, high magenta, a little more of it, and the pure violet. 
Perfect, what a beautiful balance. You can see there's areas that are pop and areas that are more muted. Okay, I think Perfect. these ladies need to show this off for a moment. Amazing, thank you so much guys. I hope you enjoyed it, it was an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much, I hope you got something out of this. Right, Love you. So we started with something commercial, then we went into a little bit of texture, and now we're gonna go into a little bit more of an avant-garde. So when um, Ariana came to me, she had hair down to here, and it was almost one length, just a few little layers. And then I looked at her and I said, I really needed to find her spirit. And I saw the little tattoo, I saw, I saw the tattoos on the neck, and I was like, I knew she wasn't really living where she should be, so I said, hey, how about something really dynamic, shaved underneath, something really, really cool, maybe a pixie top, even going maybe into a more of a mullet kind of feel, and let's add some blue in your hair, and let's make your hair dark. And she's like, go for it. So I'm gonna finish that now on stage right now. I'm gonna use my blade. I'm gonna use No Breaker, because I love using No Breaker when I'm cutting, and I also style with it, so it doesn't even matter. So if you, as you start to see, you can start to see the undercut. I did a blade using the whole thing. I'm gonna really come in here now, and I'm gonna start to blade it out. Anyhow, so, we always like, we do a little competition, you know? So um, I'm up for it, honey. So I did. She came in with dark roots. She hasn't bleached her tone with my friend Jess over there for like six months. And I'm like, you know what, right? Let's just make it deeper. So I just really like messed up the next person's gonna bleach it out. So good luck to you, right? So made the roots super, super dark. Cause she already had this like a brownish color. So I made this into a darker color. So it's more potent, right? And then we shaved the underneath and then bleached it out. So we want to make sure this color kind of matches though, but it's very important. Also like the blonde or those toners are really helpful. So, um, and then we're like, you know what? Let's just really match the eyebrows too. I mean, she actually, she really looks badass. I just really didn't have to do much, you know? It's kind of like, just go with the flow. She had a great vibe and um, she can carry it off. And um, yeah, I'm gonna, um, it's so hot, right? Isn't it so hot? Come on, how hot is this? Right? So the great thing about it is like when you go into the, to the razor, you really cops and spaces through. You can see the black really gonna be pop, just pop so hard. So we made the hairline a little darker so when you can see me cutting with the blade, it's kind of like a, the color is gonna be much stronger. Also, the, um, the dark oil mists, it's one of my favorite ones to cut with a you know, with the blade. One of mine, I like No Breaker too, but the mist is like my second one. Um, because it has a nice slip, but doesn't make the hair wet, right? So I'm just gonna pinch every section. I'm just using the tip or the middle belly of my blade and kind of like shave off like you shave cheese. It's kind of the same. You know when you shave cheese like that, like the same thing, well, you know. So you take the top, it's just pinch it, raise it, and don't be afraid. She's getting paid for the job, she'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> I think. So, just hold it up. 
But look, look, you see, it's so cool, right? So take a section, raise it up a little bit, and kind of like, it's like you tailor make this whole haircut. And my beautiful bleaching tone, what I'm so proud of, it's like, ah, black and white. It's, I go, I die for it. I love it so much, obviously. So go I ahead. Just went, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You finish, Morel. What are you doing? Well, what am I doing? So I just kind of blended, it. I'm just really blending. First I started with some skimming, a really nice deep skim, which is really, really cool because you really want to go into like, if you look at when you're skimming, you really want to come in. And when you come in, I'm going to see if I can get to this camera here. Ah, here we go. I'm going to start a little higher and then I'm going to start to skim. I'm going to hold that blade really, really strong onto it. And I'm going to make my blend just like that. So. My thing is, I want her to be able to move this forward and let the undercut show from underneath. And then you can kind of see this whole mullet thing working. And then if she doesn't want to show that under, she can kind of bring it over and then it just kind of just blends in magically just like that. I really, really like, I really love that you can move that into a square and get it anyway. Because today, you know, everybody, you know, with Instagram, you want to be like, Everybody wants to be different. Every time you see somebody, they want to be able to change and morph into different looks, right? Because they have their own brand. And for me, when I looked at her, I was just like, I want her to be able to morph her look into anything she wants. She can move it to the side. She could bring it there. I really wanted to keep it square here so that when she moves it over, you can kind of look and see all of that different shading inside of there. What do you all think of that? Cool? Now I'm going to come in with some curve cutting. And as I do my curve cutting, I'm going to just come in and really just finish off my blend just with doing some curve cutting. If you see, I'm holding my, my blade like as if it was a pen. And I'm actually going in there and drawing and making my mark. So again, what do you think I'm going to use? Microwave fiber, one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm going to put it in there. I just put a little drop in there and I'm going to move it around. Everyone loves to see this, right? because of its fibers, right? <laughs> but for me, I like to break it down a little bit into my hands, and then I can just start to move this hair around. We can go into a lot of different shapes. We can morph it into more of a texture. If you can see, you can I'll move her around this way. You can kind of move this into a cool texture inside of here. I'm opening up this. I'm gonna take this micro web and I'm gonna kind of like bring it down on the face a little bit. Open that up right there. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I think Ariana is like herself right now. She could not wait to cut off the top of her hair. She was like, oh my God, another couple of hours and I'm going to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks really good. Thank you. Oh, so you're does welcome. yours. Mm. I love my Morel. You know, me and Morel toured Asia together. We've done so much on stage together. She is truly like my family. And she's super funny. So can you imagine traveling for a month with Morel in Asia? Well, I kind of have to be funny with him. <laughs> We've been in some situations. So craft clay also, um, I feel like craft clay is like part of my hands, you know? I, I love it so much. And I don't think I'd go anywhere without craft clay. So who doesn't like craft clay? Come on, give me some love for craft clay. Ha! <laughs> Okay, how are we doing? You can stand up. Oh my God, I love you too. Let's give it a little bit of a spin. Yes. Woo!
invited this year to be judging the BEA Awards. The Beauty and Vision Awards. So excited to be one of this year's BEA Nail Judges. I'm so excited to be a judge for the BEA Awards. What an honor. There is nothing like it. This is one of my favorite events of the year because of the strong flex that it allows creatives to do. Neo means taking something from the past and making it new. Flux is about movement, expansion, and really flow. Something that aesthetically is pleasing, but also has that masterful eye and touch. Can't wait to see your entries. I look forward to meeting you. Best of luck, contestants. So, wow. Can we give our artists an amazing round of applause for the incredible work that you have seen tonight? So as you guessed it, it is time to announce our Beauty and Vision Awards 2023 winners. So before we do so, I'd like to give you a little bit of information about what these wonderful people have achieved. So this year we have 39 finalists that are with us in the room you saw at the beginning of the event. And we changed it up a little bit. Uh, in the past, we had a lot of categories. This year, we decided to kind of break it down into craft. So you have color, style, cut, and nails. Within each of these categories, you have subcategories. And that's what we're gonna go through tonight. The prizes that they will receive if they are crowned the winners tonight are $1,000 in cash plus a full certification journey uh, at the Weller Studio and wherever they want to take it. And that is valued at more than $6,000 of education. So it is a lot and we are so ready to announce the first. So we will start with cut. So within the cut category, you will see a, a little bit of a recap on the screen right now. In our cut category, we do have three subcategories. We have students, we have creative, and we have ready to wear. Okay, so are you ready to see the final list in each of these categories? So let's start with our students. Are they up? Okay. All right, so give it up for Alan Atkinson from Ogle School, Jordan Pena from Ogle School San Antonio, and Becky Batulga for Ogle School San Antonio. Congratulations, Ogle. You won the prize tonight. So are we ready to hear the winner of this category? The winner of the student cut category is Alan Atkinson! Alan, come on up! Where is Alan? Come on up, Alan. Get your trophy. Come on up. Come up with us. Hi! How do you feel? This is amazing. Oh, I'm going to say... I wasn't ready. Thank you so much. Oh my God. All right, this let's take a photo. Come in the middle. Come in the middle, between us. There we go. Right here. Congratulations, Alan. Can you please step in the back over there on top of the stage? We'll keep you with us. So, Christina's here now. Christina McCarver, let's give hello, her a big hello, welcome. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I feel like I'm part of the ultimate blonde uh, segment. <laughs> with my own yes, yeah. you are. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next category, and also, by the way, we had over 1,100 entries. So this is a huge, huge, huge achievement for anybody that has made it this far. Um, so let's pull that slide up. So for Creative Cut, we have Jacqueline Coladonado. We have Morel Koken, who we have seen, right? And we also have Viper Doom from The Harlot. <laughs> and the winner of the Creative Cut category is... Jacqueline Colodonado. Thank you. Can 
right, let's keep going with our last subcategory in the cut section. And it is ready to wear. Let's look at our finalist. Jennifer Akagi from 77 Salon. Teresa Romero from Jose Luis Salon. And Georgia Bolton from The Harlot in Los Angeles. And the winner is Georgia Bolton from The Harlot. Category. Yep. Let's see our And little... styling is very important in our industry, right? It's the way we express all of our creativity. Sometimes you don't have the liberty to cut or to color in a lot of ways, but styling is always kind of an open door to really boost your craft. And we have in this category four subcategories. So the first category, Christina, is the student in style. Yes, let's get right to it. Okay, so we have Amy Howard from Hayes Academy. We have Okia Johnson from Bellis Academy in Chula Vista. We also have Antonise Jones from Ogle School. And the winner for student style is Okia Johnson. Congratulations! I just want to say thank you. I'm really nervous. <laughs> She's very nervous. She just wants to say thank you. Thank you, Akaya. Our next category is the editorial style. All right, so our finalists are, give them a big round, Angie Hunt from Chatter's Hair Salon in Canada. Akaya Johnson again. Akaya might be a double winner, we never know. And Keisha Mines from Lamas Vision in Virginia. And the winner is Keisha Mines. Ah! Thank y'all so much, that's it. <laughs> Keisha enters every year, every competition. She's amazing. Um, thank you, Keisha. No, go back, go back, go back. <laughs> She's very nervous indeed. Okay, next category. Next category is Curls and Coils Style. So we have Katie Mansell from Culture Hair Studio in Durham, North Carolina. We have Enrique Lamboy from Kike Studios in Rockville, Maryland. And we have Will Marie Pagan Morales from Carol Mojica Beauty and Aesthetic in Caguas, Puerto Rico. And the winner is Katie Mansell. This is not your first time, right? No, it's my third. She's a multiple winner, you guys. Right. Congrats, Katie. All right, let's keep going. We have a lot more. So our next category is 
bridal style. So bridal is huge in salon, right? Like you get a lot of brides and they want for their special day. So really, really going into um, this kind of styling is very important. So Angelica Morella Tonta from Lifetime Spa, Lifetime Spa in Lake Zurich. Angela Drobot from High Society Salon in New York. And Kira McClanigan from Parlor Hair Canada. And our winner is Angela Drobot. Angela, come on up. so much <laughs> really education for recognizing my work thank you everyone <laughs> oh congrats thank you so much angela okay shall we go to the next category let's go to the next category okay. the next category is nails <laughs> All right, so OPI is an amazing brand. And if you don't know, it is part of our family, right? And we have amazing products to do natural nail extensions. Uh, we are very involved in our school and helping our students to truly find their career. So we're very, very excited to incorporate our nail category into the Beauty and Vision Awards. So our first category is students. So we have as finalist Ruby, sorry in advance, Armandaris from Ogle School, Alicia Hayes from Hayes Academy of Hair Design, and Tierra Grimes from Ogle. Once again, Ogle takes the cake tonight, you guys. And the winner is Alicia Hayes. Salina, um, thank you for this opportunity. Aww. Thank you. Let's take a. Okay. So the next category is hand painted gel nail. So we have Brittany Peterson um, from Provo, Utah. We have Tasha Duff. These nails, though. From Fullerton, California, we have Caitlin Mounts from Ogle School in Denton, Texas. And the winner is Caitlin Mounts from Ogle School in Denton. mentor team at Ogle, everybody at my salon. Oh, my parents, thank you. Aw, congrats. All right, the next category is creative nails. So our finalists are Ruby Armandaris from Ogle School, Ella Stallnaker from Tennis in Nightdale, New North Carolina, and Crystal Connolly from Vivi Galore, Fort Worth, Texas. And our winner for Creative Nail is Ruby Armatoris. Here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to my team. The hardest part out of all of this is just believing in myself, and my team has always believed in me and pushed me to do better. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Ruby. Congratulations. 
She is shaking like a leaf, guys. <laughs> Love her. All right, so the last big category, but not the least, is color. All right, color, come on, color is life, right? Color is the bread and butter of what we do every day. It is the way we express ourselves. It is the way we can bring things to life in a very, very specific way. So we have for this one, because it is the most important, uh, we have five subcategories. And who's number one color in the world? Wella! Okay, so we'll start with our students and let's look at our finalists. So Amy Howard from Hayes Academy of Hair Design, Ashley Ward from Creative Images Institute of Cosmetology, and Faith Beck from Hayes Academy of Hair Design. And the winner is... Amy Howard from Hayes Academy of Hair Design. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Okay. Next category. Our next category is creative color. This is a big one. Ariana Lombardo from East Coast Hair Studio, Oceanside, New York. We have Erica Farias from, uh, she's an educator at Bellis Academy in San Diego. And we have Jamie Milmather from Love Culture Salon in Providence, Rhode Island. And the winner for Creative Color is Erica Farias. Erica, come on up. I'd like to thank my family for the motivation and Bella's. Um, thank you, Bella, also for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's take a picture. Okay, what's next, Carol? The next category is ready to wear color. What we do every day in the salon, right? So our finally star, Zamaya Cole from Avalon Institute. We have some big supporter of Zamaya yes. here. Love Jennifer Akagi from 77 Salon. And Kara Kessner from The Harlot once again. And the winner is Kara Kessner. Of course, our daddy harlot, Morale. Thank you, let's take a Thank you, Cara, congratulations. Who's okay. next, Christina? Let's see, let's pull it up. So we have transformation color. This is huge, so much work. We have Carol Mojica from Carol Mojica Beauty and Aesthetic in Caguas, Puerto Rico. We have Regan Wasson from Glow Hair Studio in Ottawa, Canada, and Kara Kessner again from the Harlot. And the winner is Regan Wasson. Regan once again. <laughs> Here you go, my dear. I didn't think of anything to say, but uh, thank you so much, my friends, my family, and my family at Wella. All right. Thank you. Okay, almost the last one, the last for color. 
color. And the last four color is about curls and coils. You heard from Derek tonight, right? That when you color textured hair, you have to think maybe a little differently. So this is a category we're very excited to have introduced this year. And our finalists are, forgive me, Danielle. Danielle Koftunenko. Oh, I got it, yes. excellent. <laughs> Katie Mansell once again. And Christina Bell Nicolaitis. And the winner is Katie Mansell, double whammy. <laughs> Well, what do you have to say to that? I mean, I'm humbled. I feel I don't have words. Yeah, I'm humbled. Congratulations, Katie. You can go back. <laughs> all right, so did you all vote before the evening for your favorite? Did you? I hope so because we're gonna find out the results right now. So our People's Choice Award for the Beauty and Vision Awards 2023 is Christina Bell Nicolaitis. opportunity and my friends and my family and my amazing mentor I wouldn't be here without you thank you so much for introducing me to Wella and everybody thank you so much congratulations you deserve it all right guys so That's thank it. you Christina you're welcome thank we're you at the everyone. end of the night we're almost there so before we leave, first of all, we're going to party after this, right? So we're going to stay all together and have a couple drinks and enjoy each other even more. Our big community, our big Wella family. Before I bring out everybody else, there are a few people and a few important people I would like to thank for this evening. First of all, my wonderful show team, Melanie Garibay, Irene Zukowski, and Rocio Flores. Nothing would be possible without them. Our production company with Instinct Production and ITP, who've created all the surrounding of what you see tonight. Mendel Max Studios is doing all the live stream and all the graphic elements. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't give a big thank you to Avalon Institute, who hosted us on, on Sunday to do all the prep at the school. So let's bring back one more time all our beautiful models and our wonderful artists. Yeah, Daniel. 